bad news. What? The monkey just killed the phoenix lord. Oh no! Anyway, last week... <laughs> Hello fellow hunters of the blue and welcome to my channel and also welcome to another episode of Heavy Contrast. Heavy Contrast is a series where I try to paint one miniature to the highest standard possible using just contrast paint and highlights. And for this episode I'm going to paint Morgan Ra, finishing for now the Phoenix Lords mini-series. So thank you Games Workshop for sending me this mini free for review, although I'm painting it a little bit late, and let's get cracking. So as you can see we're starting from a base coat of Mechanicus Standard Grey on the main body. I also primed with Mechanicus Standard Grey his weapon and his tabard and I've primed with Corax White the shoulder pad and the backpack. And if you don't have Corax White because well it's discontinued by the time this is released I would just do white scar and then a quick layer with the Corax white base paint. And our first step will be to do a coat of Silk Val Burgundy over the inside part of his cloak. Don't worry too much about pulling, we don't really care too much about that now, we just want a uniform layer. This is not going to create any contrast whatsoever over this dark background, but it's going to give us the richest, most beautiful and intense burgundy color you have ever seen. With one layer, of course. Pretty amazing stuff. Here on this bit of hair on his backpack I'm going to do a layer of Basilic Cannon Grey and then I'm going to do a layer of Sigma Burgundy as I did on the inside of the cape. I just want this a little bit darkened. This will work as a kind of pre-shading. The layer of Sig Val Burgundy is now fully dry and I'm going to add a bit more darkness towards the top of the cape on the inside. For this I'm going to use Black Templar. I'm going to apply this, I'm going to clean my brush very quickly and I'm going to feather it out. Just like that. And on top of that, also with Black Templar, I'm going to apply this basically all over the model. Everything that you want to be black will have a coat of Black Templar over it. With a, a massive layer of black temper now dry, I'm going to start highlighting all the black. And there is a lot of black, and I'm going to do three different blacks. One for the armor, one for the cape, and one for the weapon. And I'm going to start with the armor, just because it's a small detail, and it's behind a lot of stuff. And for this, I'm going to start with Thunderhawk Blue, and I'm going to do a thin edge highlight with this. As thin as you can make it. The little gradient that the black temper has will serve as our thick highlight. Don't worry too much about this, it's basically going to be all covered with other stuff, so don't worry if you miss something. With all those highlights done, I'm going to move into the next one, this will be Fenrisi and Grey, and I will continue the small high edge highlight theme, but just concentrating it more towards the upper facing edges and corners. You can also pick up some of the prominent edges on the downward facing surfaces as well, of course. With that highlight done, I'm going to move into the last one. This will be a dot highlight using Blue Horror. Just very small dots, just like that, in the upper facing surfaces. With the black armor now completed, I'm going to move into highlighting the inside of his cape. And for this, I'm going to start with a mix of two parts called Borvac Red and one part Ushaptibone. Then just going to use this as a thick edge highlight. I'm just going to concentrate this over the lower sections of the cape, as you will never see the top sections, especially in between his legs. I'm also going to use this to make some scratches onto the fabric. Just some dots, some lines, just to add a bit of texture into the inside. 
With that highlight done, I'm going to move into the next one. This will be a one-to-one -one mix of Galbor Vacaret and Ushaptibone. By the way, I'm using the same mix to highlight the top knot on his backpack. And now you want to make the thinnest edge highlight you can. For the final highlight on the inside ropes and on the hair, I'm going to use a 2 to 1 mix of Fushapti Bone and Galvor Vagrade. So basically, what I'm doing is just adding progressively more Fushapti Bone, but I've just given you the exact measurements of set progression that I used. But you can just try and experiment yourself. And I'm just going to concentrate this on the very tips of the broken cloth. With the inside of the cape now done, it's time to paint the outside. And for this, I'm going to use a mix of one part of Baton Black and one part of Warp Thin Grey. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you would know that I never tell which black I'm using. I always say it's pretty much irrelevant because all blacks are basically the same. But I'm doing now because it, this is a mix and different blacks have different tinting capabilities. So I thought it's important to note which black I'm using. What I'm doing with this mix is starting with a thick edge highlight. And I'm going to basically highlight the black using Waffin Grey mixed in progressively, as we did with the inside. And that slightly purple hue is going to provide the outside cloth with, a, well, something different to the rest of the black details. You can even turn this mix into a glaze, something like this and glaze in some of the highlights on some of the most rounded bits, just to create a bit of a gradient. Please allow me to get a bit serious for a moment to talk about this video sponsor, LMAP. Much better. I'm very careful when I choose my sponsors. I've turned on a lot of companies over the time I've been doing this, and there's a very good reason why I accepted a sponsor that will sound a bit out of place. LMAP stands for Lincoln Mortgages and Protection, and it's run by a fellow hobbyist and fan of my channel. Dan approached me because he wanted to support me as a content creator and promote his business at the same time, and I'm really grateful. I immediately checked them for reviews and they were all stellar. No kidding, Google it. So I said yes. Look, I know getting a mortgage or insurance is a pain in the butt, but the truth is, as adults, we all need to do it at some point. So what better thing to do if you need to go through that process than to help a fellow hobbyist, help me, and get a fantastic service at the same time. Also consider this little bonus. At what other place can you get a mortgage or an insurance and talk about Warhammer at the same time? Only there, at Lincoln Mortgages and Protection. So if you live in the UK and need one of those two pesky things, why not give them a call or send them an email You've got nothing to lose asking for a quote and you will help a fellow hobbyist and great person. You have a link to the website in the description below and in the pinned comment of the video. Tell them I send you and ask for Dan if you want the Warhammer special treatment. Thank you LMEP for sponsoring this video and now we can get back to the painting. With that highlight done, I'm going to move into a mix of two parts Warp Thin Grey and one part a Battle Black. And I will just do a thin edge highlight with this. Remember you have to be as thin as you can possibly be here. And as we did with the inside, I'm going to make some scratchings using this mix. With that second highlight done, I'm going to move into pure WAP Thin Grey for another thin edge highlight, but this time more focused towards the corners of the ragged cloak. You can also add small dots of this on the other parts of the edges where a scratch meets and stuff like that.
And now for the final highlight on the robe, I'm going to use Celestra Grey and I'm just going to do very small dots of this in the very corners. Just that little touch. The black cloth is finished and that means we can move into the last black detail. And that will be the weapon. And for this I'm going to go for a neutral black. Again, to add a bit of differentiation. And for this, for the first step, I'm going to do a thick edge highlight using a mix of two parts of add-on black and one part mechanical standard grey. With that highlight done, well, there is still some highlighting left to do, but I want to move on with the video. With that first step done, I'm going to move into the second one, and this will be a thin edge highlight all around using downstone. So remember, the key here is making the thinnest edge highlight you can. The highlight done and going to move into the next one. This will be Administratum Grey. And we are going to do the same thin edge highlight but just concentrating it towards the corners. And for the final step I'm going to take Celestra Grey and I'm going to do a dot highlight on the corners. All the black is now done and now it's going to move into the boning but I just remember we have some brown leather here and instead of recoating and doing a layer of, I don't know, wild wood over all the color, I'm just going to highlight the straight from the black and for the first step I'm going to use dry out bark and I'm just going to basically do kind of a layer, I will leave some of the black in the very middle of the leather. And for the next step on the leather, I'm going to use a one-to-one -one mix of dried bark and carac stone. And I'm just going to pick up the edges with this. If you don't want to mix, you can use something like goth or brown here. It's basically the same color. And for the final highlight on the leather, I'm going to use pure carac stone. And I will just do a very, very small highlight on the edge. With all the dark parts now painted, it's time to focus on the other main color on this mini, and that is all the bone and all the light colors. So for this, I'm going to base coat all those areas using Corax White. And there are a lot of them, so be patient here. Six hours later. As you can see, all the white has been base coated stuff for the gems because I have to paint the metal first and now it's time to shade it, but I'm going to show it to you in a more convenient place. Here we have the shoulder pads, which will be the same color as the mask and the top of the backpack and the whole bones on the backpack. And I'm going to start with the cold colors on the shoulder pads and mask with a mix of one part Drakenhof Nightshade, one part Seraphine Sepia and one part Medium. Once it's applied, as always, I'm going to take up any excess, just so we don't get any ugly pooling, stuff like that. And I'm also going to take out some of the wash from the top sections. And for the one bone color, I'm going to use a mix of one part Seraphine Sepia and one part Agrax Earthshade. As always, I'm going to go section by section, and I'm going to take out quite a lot. I don't want extreme deep shadows here. And with all those two contrast space codes done, you can see that you can see that we have now glued basically everything in place except for the backpack, mainly because, well, this way we don't have to go highlighting things that are not going to be seen. And with that out of the way, 
let's finish the bone and I'm going to do it here on his backpack and first of all I want to add a little bit more of color in the spine here so I'm going to add Tarkor Rage Shade to the half to lower section and then I'm going to feather it out onto the rest so again I'm going to apply it I'm going to clean the brush and I'm going to feather it out and yeah this slightly purpley hue is going to look fantastic. I'm also going to apply this onto the inside here of the armor plates. Maugan is now complete. That is in one piece, not complete as finished. We still have to paint some details. Well, I already started with the bone because there is a lot of it and I wanted to get on moving with it. But I'm going to show you how to paint the bone in the backpack. And for the first highlight, I'm going to use Karak Stone. And I'm just going to use it on the darker parts of the spine. What I want to do here is just a simple edge highlight with this. There will be one point where the Karak stone is not doing anything. So about there, that is because I wanted to achieve a Karak stone color for the bone. That was my uh, initial goal. So just keep on highlighting until you don't see anything. With that first highlight done, we are now ready to move into the next one. This will be a mix of one part Karak stone and one part pure white. And this will be my general highlight on the bone details. You can also thin this down to this sort of consistency and apply a small layering, like a, yeah, like a small layer of this on certain rounded details to add a bit more volume. Here on the dark parts of the spine, we are going to do a thin edge highlight with this. With that highlight done, we're going to move into the next one. This will be two parts, white to one part Karak stone. And I'm just going to basically keep on doing the same highlights, but smaller and thinner. And here on the darker bits, I'm just going to do very small highlights on the upper facing edges. Just for the sake of speed, I'm going to illustrate the last highlight, which will be pure white. And I'm just going to do a very small highlight on the most prominent corners and edges. Be very careful with this. Have your paint thin and flowing nicely. With the bone done, I'm going to move into the cold white details. And for this, I'm going to start with a mix of one part celestial gray and two parts white. You can use probably fluent gray here. I just like that slight greenish hue that celestial gray has. For the rounder parts, like the um, front of the skull, I'm going to thin this down into this sort of consistency here. And I'm just going to apply a glaze on the middle section here. With that highlight on, I'm going to move into the last one. This will be just pure white. And I'm just going to pick up the very ex extreme corners, do the thinnest edge highlights I can. The white is now done and there are only a few details left to paint. And I'm going to start with the easiest one, which is all of the gold. And for this, I'm going to start with a mix of one part red tube armor and one part of stone hole silver. And I will just pick up all the metallic details with this. Now 
now to shade all the gold, I'm going to use Garagak Sewer. This is one part Garagak Sewer and two parts Contrast Medium. You could of course use something like Gorgon the Fur, that will also work fantastically well. But I just want to use the new colors just well, because it's fun. With the shading dry, or, or mostly dry, I'm going to highlight it and for this I'm going to move back into a one-to-one -one of Retributor Armor and Stormhole Silver. For the final highlight on the metallics, I'm going to use a straight up Stormhole Silver and just do very small highlights in the corners and stuff like that. All the metallic details are now finished and I also base coated all the gems using Korax White and in the box art you can see he has two different colors of gems, red and teal, but I can't be bothered with all of that and so I'm just going to do one color and what better chance to use my new favorite contrast paint Croxigore Scales than this. I'm applying in Croxigore Scales, moving my brush from the bottom upwards so more Croxigore Scales get deposited on the top, creating a nice gem effect basically with one brush stroke if you practice enough. Once this layer dries, I'm probably going to apply another one just concentrated onto the top right side of each gem. I did about three layers of Crossigore scales, each one taking less and less space. And now to finish the contrast stage on the gems, I'm going to take Black Templar and just do a very small dot of Black Templar into the darkest part. So with all that done, it's time to highlight the gems. Also note that I dropped just a tiny bit of the Croxigore scales into the eye sockets. Very hard to see, but it is there. And I'm going to use Gauss Blaster Green to do a highlight on the lighter part of the gem. And also going to do a small dot on the darker bit. Be sure you can make a smaller dot afterwards. And now to finish off the gems, I'm going to take pure white and do two dots with it. One inside of the top facing Gauss Blaster Green dot and another one just on the opposite side. With all that done, it's now time to move into the blade. As with the rest of the things that was cleaned and base coated with Corax White, and now I'm going to do a wash all over to shade everything and then I will do an M pattern on top of that. And to do all of those things, I'm going to use a mix of one part Aethermatic Blue, one part Space Woods Grey, and two parts Contrast Medium. This first pass is only to shade the recesses and stuff like that. So I will basically take away almost all of it. What I will do now with the same mix is to do an NMM pattern. So I will apply this mix to one side, clean it up and feather it out. And I will do the same on the opposite side of the blade. If once that's dry, I will do another layer, but more focused towards the very edge. The second layer of the contrast mix is now dry and I'm going to start highlighting it. And for this, first of all, I'm going back to Corax White, which I'm going to thin down a lot, but Corax White is very covering, so be careful. And I'm going to do a layer towards the other corner. And I'm also going to edge highlight the whole blade. And for the final highlight on the blade, I'm going to use pure white and I'm just going to basically edge highlight everything, but you can also glaze it down a little bit. This is the consistency I'm going for, as you can see, very, very thin over the opposite edges to the darker ones, but very subtly, you don't need much. And with that last step done, Morgan Rice finished and to be honest, I think he looks quite amazing. I really like that subtle differentiation between the three different blacks. Black is always a very challenging color, especially if you want to add variation, but I think we got there in the end. 
and I'm really proud of it. So with that said, I just want to give a special thank you to all my lovely patrons and channel members that help me do all of this video. So if you want to help me make more tutorials, go on join my Patreon page or become a member here on YouTube. And of course, special thank you to Heather Aster, LMAP Limited, Tyrannosaur, Carlos Rivera, Chris Goffenthal, Christoph Moret, Javi Mota, Kim Anderson, Michael Boye, Robert Smith, Thomas Ustergaard, Tom Brand, Victor Lomen, Dark Kavok, Aaron Dell, Charles Armintas, Chris Fivey, Kieran Omurtha, Chris Talios, Dan Mako, Darcy Farrar, David Sutherland, Dr. V, Gareth Smith, Geoffrey Dell, G Force, Green Rollins, Howard Hotville, Jamie Milligan, Joe Simpson, JT Butler, Kevin Mian, Kevin Sula, Sana Lindemann, Mark Jarvis, Mike Chaney, Natius Maximus, Nick Demao, Oscar Jonathan Thunberg, Roger Nelson, Samuel Sasha Park, Stephanie Old Tasted, and Tim Euchida for being the coolest persons in the planet. Be like these fine folks, join my Patreon and take control.